Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in today's video I want to show y'all how to make little wire circlets like this. Now also you can take these same circlets and shape them around to where instead of being kind of heart shaped they're straight across or they're a little bit more curved and you can wear them as necklaces. Um, this is one, I was making a bunch of these yesterday, this is one that I did in some different green tones with some different beads. This is one that I did that used twice as much wire but came out so pretty. Like, I absolutely love the way that this one came out. Like, if I were picking one for me, gotta, gotta do the duck face. Um, it would probably be something like this one. Um, and then I also did a nice, just cute little one in blue. They also look super cute worn farther back as little tiara headbands. Um, you can also... Now they all have this little loop on them where you can either pin it into your hair or attach ribbon. And this, is, this isn't this is the design I'll be teaching today, but this definitely is an option. And this is one of my favorite designs for also forming around into a necklace. I mean, you can take it and just something completely reshape it and I already have a necklace on, but it just gives you an idea of how it could sit. And then I just come back through and gently reshape it. <laughs> just like that. So um, let's get started. Okay, so here we are. These are those same examples that I was showing you guys. There's the purple one, the blue one, the green one. And then that's the one with just very simple with copper. And then this is another one that I did entirely out of 18 gauge um, para wire. So let me set these off to the side. Now in this video, I'm using 16 gauge dead soft aluminum. It's, I mean, this stuff is, I mean, like butter, so soft. As well as 18 gauge para wire. Um, the tag's all over loved. Um, I'll have the links to all of the tools and materials down in the video description below. So if you want to uh, kind of get your hands on your own, sorry, I'm gonna mess with the camera settings just a little bit. Always experimenting to find what works best. Now also, these are some of the different beads that I'm working with today. This <laughs> little bead organizer is actually the front panel of a um, highlighter pack that I was like, hey, that could keep my beads relatively separated, and I'm a hoarder who loves just plain and trash, I guess. Um, <laughs> now, also, I have this little faceted marquee drilled bead that's drilled through side to side. I have some different bead caps, some four millimeter round glass beads, some six millimeter bicones, some different um, rondels, and kind of flat round beads, I don't know. <laughs> and then I'm also going to be using, let me pull out just a couple of pinches of some eight millimeter faceted Sorsky crystals, some six millimeter in a slightly more, like these guys have a little bit of an AB flash to them. These guys have like a lot of that Aurora Borealis finish. And then some little four millimeter bicones. I love bicones for stuff like this because they do have such a nice flash and sparkle to them. But um, I've also made like, where did I even set it down? There it is. This one here was done entirely with round beads. And I think that has a very nice effect too. So don't hesitate to experiment with different materials and methods. Um, <laughs> so, the first thing that, oops, that we're going to want to do is to check to make sure that everything actually fits onto our 18 gauge wire. The pliers that I'm using today are wire snips, bent nose, nylon jaw, flat nose, and round nose pliers. Again, there'll be links to where you can purchase these down below, or at least check out the variety that I have. And I'm just going to make sure that this 
core wire is nice and straight because with these bicone beads if there's any kind of kinking on your core wire they're not going to want to thread on and they'll be much more likely to break so our center bead slides on wonderfully I'm not really worried about these large ones yeah those go on pretty nice those go on pretty nice I'm mostly worried about these wee bitty ones oh please fit because you're so pretty and sparkly and they don't that one didn't at least sometimes I'll try a couple dropped nope okay so I'm not gonna be using the four millimeter today <sighs> Say Lizzie. so and I'm gonna pull out probably a good oh 20 inches of this core wire because there is no way to cleanly add in um, new wire on this. So I pull off everything that I think I'm going to be able to use right from the get-go. Okay, just cleaning that wire up, getting it nice and straight and flat. <clears throat> and I'm gonna start by threading on my faceted marquee bead to mm, roughly the center and I'm going to angle up just a little on either side as symmetrically as I can and I think I want to do just a little round bead on either side this is another one that, uh oh I just made a mess <laughs> that um, sometimes the beads don't want to fit but sometimes you know uh, you can kind of dig through and still manage to get one on there anyways the ones that don't fit I'm setting off to the side that way I'm not grabbing the same bead over and over again oh boy there we go there's one that fits and so that way we'll have just a nice little clear bead on either side. So there's one bead. I'm so tickled to be using this piece of trash to um, organize my beads. Because I go through highlighters pretty crazy. Like, when they're always drying up or I'm always losing them. Good gracious. I really thought I'd have a better rate, success rate with these little 4mm glass beads. Okay, there we go. I guess I've kind of picked them over already on other projects. Um, now I'm going to do about a yard of this 16 gauge wire. And what I do is I actually hold it in one end and then I just pull until you can't see, but this roll is right in line with my sternum. So it's given me, I mean, a yard would have been all the way across to my shoulder, which I guess I'll do a yard. And, or you could use a yardstick, but frequently I don't have a yardstick just on hand. Um, so I just stick to uh, using my body parts as a frame of measurement because typically if I'm making jewelry, my body is on hand. So I've found round about the center and I'm going to be bending against the curve. So I'm just bending this up nicely like that into a very nice V shape and I'm going to put this behind our marquee bead because this bead is going to have the tendency to want to flip around and do all sorts of very creative things um, but I just want it to stay in place so I'm bracing this um, bead there on the back And I'm going to come around and, um, yeah, just bracing it there on the back. <clears throat> hey, Randy, I think I can hear Napa from your video game. Sorry. If y'all can hear the video game noises in the background, though, and you like playing video games, please be sure to check out Randy's channel. I'll link it down in the comments. He's Randy Vaughn here on YouTube. He does, like, Let's Plays and stuff. They're very good. 
So now you can see how that's looking on the back. And this right now, this is just a whole tangled mess of wire, but just be patient with it. You'll get there. So, and I'm bending around. And then it's going to come down like that. And I think I'm going to have them exit towards the top. So just like that. And so you can see this still has a little bit of wiggle to it, but not nearly so much as what it did have. And so now from here, oh, let's see, how am I going to want to build this up? I'm going to do another four millimeter glass bead. Because as these are kind of inexpensive, they actually come strung in between some of the Swarovski crystals that I get. Um... I use them as like space filler and because they're still very pretty so there's that one and I think I'm gonna do a flat metal bead and to build up your inventory of beads because that's it's taken me nine years of being a professional jewelry designer to build up what I felt like was a nice like substantial collection of beads to be able to pick and choose from I get a lot of mixed bead kits, like from uh, from like Hobby Lobby and Michaels and like, I'll go to estate sales and find like just other people's old jewelry and I'll take it apart just to experiment with a bead shape, you know, that I might otherwise have not been able to get my hands on. So here I have a little bead cap and I'm going to thread down one of my 8mm bicones to fit right into that cap. So I love a little bit of metal texture contrast. Okay, I'm just starting this one on. And I'm repeating this pattern back down. So another six millimeter faceted bicone. Another little flat silver fluted bead. And also, like, any time I'm ordering from, like, Fire Mountain Gems or, you know, anywhere, sometimes I'll just add in, it might just be a couple dollars, but I'll add in a pack of something that I haven't gotten before, um, just to experiment with. And so now, you can see I'm going to kind of push with my thumbnail to get a nice shape there, and I'm coming from the back to the front. And I'm going to twist this around. Oop, just like that and I'm going to leave this here like this while I do the other side I've found that at least for me I have a much better success with keeping things symmetrical if I do one step on one side and then one step on the other side so we're gonna start with a four millimeter glass bead just round then one of our flat metal fluted and then a six millimeter faceted bicone and then a bead cap I love little bead caps. They add, I mean, they're just a little bit, but they add such a nice touch. Another six millimeter, another faceted, and then another one of those. And we come down, and so again, to get it to match, and I'm not entirely sure yet if this is going to be the front or the back. I kind of like the way it looks with that metal, metal piece coming down into the front. And so to get it to be as symmetrical as possible, I'm still kind of just petting along the inside of my thumbnail to force that curve a little bit more. Then just wrapping around. there we go so there's that one hmm and so now from here and I'm gonna want about this much beadwork from here to here um, that way it's a pretty substantial circlet So I actually think I'm going to bring this one back up 
and I'm going to curve it around. And I try to add in these coils when I can because they do take up a little bit of space that might otherwise, like, I wouldn't really be able to fit just a bead in there afterwards. Okay, so I'm going to do another one of these formula. Gosh darn it, none of these are wanting to fit. Come on, beads. So there's a four millimeter, there's a six millimeter bicone, and then another, woohoo, two that fit right in a row. Um, and that way they'll just take up that little bit of space that was in there. And just wrapping it around. And this is something, this doesn't have a whole lot of weaving going on, it's just um, practicing a, a nice simplistic wire work, and I think that's great. Okay, so now <laughs> the fun part, trying to get it to match. Um, so we have it coming up towards the top, and I'm curling down and towards the end. So, curling down and towards the end. And now before joining it, I'm going to thread these beads on. The beads really help me with maintaining my spacing, too. Because, I mean, since they're more or less all the same size. Oh, except for the holes in them, drat. <laughs> there we go. Um, it'll keep the spacing correct. If I just do the same number of beads. Mm, yep, that looks pretty good. Now, also, worst case scenario, please keep in mind, you know... If it's not perfectly symmetrical, it is a handmade piece of art. Maybe that will lend itself to the final piece and how it might look really nice and organic and I mean all kinds of stuff. So now I'm going to do where it's curving a nice little twist this way. Little loop de loos. And I think I want to have it come down. And if you start getting some weird kinks in the wire, that's why I love this dead soft stuff, is I can just come through and kind of straighten it with my finger. And so you can experiment with the placement. And I don't think I'm ready to come that far in yet. But I definitely don't want it right there. Maybe right here. And so I'm going to come around down from below. And come down. And so you can see how that happened. <sighs> okay, so how did that happen? Let's think. So this one, it's curving in towards the center. And then towards the top. So... Yes. Okay. <laughs> and the more you do this, the more practice you'll get. And that's why we always keep our nylon gel pliers handy. Is so that you can make mistakes and then kind of wipe them. Wipe your slate a little bit. Okay, I'm going to pull that down some. And now I'm bracing this with my thumb and putting in a bend. Do you see how I bent that? And that will help me as I guide this wire back through for the wire to just kind of naturally decide, oh yeah, I want to lay right there. Whereas if you don't do that, you'll get a lot of like wiggling and variation in where your stuff starts ending up. And now I'm just going to curve it down and behind to right here, where we can then start adding beads again. But yeah, the the cues that I take for my symmetry are it's exiting down and it's entering from behind right here. So now in here, it's exiting down and then I'm entering in from behind right over here. And 
you can start doing a gentle curve to it or you can save that all for the very end hmm, I think I'm gonna add in another one of these large beads so I'm gonna repeat this motif over here that we had going on so four millimeter there's a flat round there's a six millimeter there's a bead cap There's an eight millimeter, and there's a bead cap hugging the other end. There's a six millimeter. There's a flat one. And I hope that this one fits, because otherwise, yes, okay. Because <laughs> that was my last one out of my tray. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to dig out a couple more. So now from here, I'm just bending it around from behind to the front, bending, boop, just like that. Now I'm going to do that same thing on the other side, just let me dig out some more of those beads. Why on earth do I have Christmas music stuck in my head? Rocking around the Christmas tree and it's July. <laughs> I am not ready for Christmas, y'all. Or the cold and the ice and the, I don't know, cold sounds pretty nice right now. But I barely started my tomato harvest, so I am not ready for the end of the growing season just yet. Okay, so I grabbed out some more of those beads. Let's see if any of them fit. Nope. But I mean, as far as basically free extra beads goes, it's really, I'll take what I can get. Ah, there we go. So there's one. There's one of these little smushed beads. A six millimeter bicone. So I really like these because they incorporate wire wrapping and bead stringing with some super fun fantasy gear. Or I mean if you wanted a circlet or a tiara for a wedding or wear into the grocery store. I mean I'm not going to judge you. <laughs> Like, my work uniform is not complete if I am not wearing my sparkly tiara. Because <laughs> you can also make these to match with elf ears, because I use these same bicones and stuff in a lot of our wire elf ear designs. And if Future Vaughn remembers to, which she's been slightly more reliable lately, I'll put a link somewhere up on the screen um, where you can go watch how to make um, some wire wrapped elf ears. They're super fun. And that way you too can properly go elf yourself. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. So there's that. So now I'm going to repeat this little, just super simple motif. Round, bicone, round. If I can. There we go. So actually on this one, I think I'm going to incorporate some of these rondels just to show you guys the difference that it makes. So yeah, that's how it looks. This is it without rondels. That's it with rondels. So I mean, it's very subtle, but it's nice. And I'm coming down from the back up to the front. And I think this is going to be my last one. So I'm just going to sculpt it and I'm going to leave that tail right there. So now I get to do that same thing here on the other end. May I have the good fortune of having the beads fit on my wire? Last two. There's one. <laughs> Rondel. Woo! I need to go pick the six, you know, the right six numbers. But good fortune. <laughs> okay. So check in the distance between the bead and the wire. And then bending around. Having it come up. Okay, so now from here, I'm actually going to do... I'm going to come out... Oh, 
like seven millimeters, maybe a quarter of an inch, and do a 90 degree bend downwards. I'm going to put my round nose pliers right there. And I'm going to wrap this tail of the 18 gauge core wire around my round nose like this, and then I'm going to wrap it around the stem. So um, an example I frequently use is that if that loop that we made is the head and this is the neck, I'm just wrapping this wire around the neck. And I'm just going to wrap it all the way down. Now you could do a little coil, but I'm just going to snip it. Being really careful to only cut one wire. Eh, pinged across the room. I'm going to use my bent nose pliers to gently but securely smush this tail down in line with the other ones. Because especially for something that's going to be worn in your hair, you want as little stuff to tangle as possible. Okay, so there's that one. And I'm going to measure three finger widths and snip and then use my round nose pliers to make a very nice little spiral off to the side. Once it gets so far I just use my fingers on it and kind of cover up where that join is going to be. Okay. So now I'm going to do that same thing here on the other side. 90 degree to I mean, it's not particular which way it goes. I just try to be consistent. And wrap around. Then, if that was the head that we just made, that the loop that the pliers are through, then we're just going to wrap this 18 gauge core wire around itself all the way down. I'm going to snip that excess wire and try to not let it ping across the room this time because I use these quite a bit for making just cute little like bead links. So I mean this is still very usable wire. But we do want to smush down that end. Oop, there we go. And then I'm going to measure three finger widths. It's okay to flip it over too to make it a little easier. Snip. And now I'm going to grab it with my pliers. And I'm going to come on around. Oops. Making a nice little spiral. Now also I just noticed there's a little bit of variation here. This one I went from, I got off somewhere. This one went from the back to also the back and then came around to the front. This one went from the front, or from the back to the front and then, but I mean, that's pretty subtle. Uh, I'm not gonna freak out about it. You hear me Vaughn? <laughs> Let's not freak out right now. I don't have to remake the whole thing, Um, but you know, natural variation it happens and honestly I don't think if I had pointed that out I don't know if anyone would have actually noticed but um I think it'll be okay so now from here what we would do is we would grab some uh, ribbon so let me set these off to the side I'm just going to steal some ribbon from this other uh, circlet. And I usually use like quarter inch ribbon. I really like the satin stuff because you can like, it's pretty if you braid it into your hair. But you could also go ahead and attach like some hair combs or, you know, just it's your, it's your piece of art. So do however you like. So I just fed up. The wire is folded in half. I fed the fold through the loop. And then... Pushing my fingers through the loop, I'm just pulling on through. It's a hitch knot or a lark's head knot. And this way, I mean, you can accessorize it out and have the ribbon match your outfits or, you know, something that ties in with your hair better. Okay, so you can see there, I just threaded it through the loop and then opening it up, 
grabbing and just pulling through. And so now I'm going to meet you all right back in a different camera angle to show you some final shaping techniques. Hey guys, so I'm taking off the necklace that I was wearing. Totally cute little fairy doors. If you want to win stuff like this, be sure to check me out on uh, Patreon because I do like giveaways and stuff. Um, and then here we have the circlet that we just made that could very, very easily be worn as a necklace. And to do that, I would just take it and kind of gently shape it around. Some people enjoy wearing chokers. I prefer stuff that kind of sits like right here. So it would just sit like that and you could tie it behind your neck. You could attach chain to it. Like if you specifically wanted this like as a necklace. But I really enjoy the kind of shape of a stiff wire necklace. Because it just sits just a little far away. It has a nice shape to it. So, I mean, I think that's totally, like, a beautiful fantasy necklace. Um, or, you know, for going grocery shopping. <laughs> and then for wearing it like a tiara or a circlet, I would just take it, and I'm very gently just doing a little bit of a bend. So, like, I'm pushing down kind of on this side. There's some experiment with it, you know. But you'll get the hang of it. And then, I mean, it's very flat right now, too. So, I usually bend it more than what you would think it would need. That way it hugs the skin. Because you don't want your circlet, like, standing, like, poking out funny from your head. You can do it over your hair. Under your hair. Sorry, my bangs are all like, we want to be up front. <laughs> Or you could even set it like a little crown. Like this. Which I really enjoy these for whenever I'm working in the booth because whenever I'm doing demonstrations, I'm often like, kid you not, I'm going like this. And I'm sitting. So everybody's like, taller and like that's the angle that so it's like showcase um now also if you wanted to keep in mind it, it, I would have done some things differently but you can totally take it and make some actual crowns just change the structure of it a little bit so there's a lot of different options here guys for you to make your very own wire wrapped fantasy circlets and I'm really super pleased with how this one came out. Um, if you guys decide that you want to buy some of my work, I've actually started an Etsy store. Um, and so that's pretty fun. I'm posting just one item a day. Um, that way uh, it's manageable. Um, so if, be sure to follow my store so you get updates about whenever something's posted. Um, as our travel season slows down I might increase the amount that we post to our Etsy but just a lot of folks ask us about Etsy and they're like you know what's your opinion and I tell them what my opinion was but like last time I used Etsy was like 10 years ago so I'm kind of functioning on outdated you know information so I was like I'm gonna give Etsy another try because I needed to redo my website anyways <laughs> so I was like I'm gonna do it I'm gonna give Etsy another try and then let you guys know how it goes so currently I'm withholding judgment or opinions because this is like day two at the time of recording of me actually posting stuff to my Etsy. So I'm back to Earth Creations. There's links to all of my social medias and stores down below. Um, like I had briefly mentioned, if you guys really like my work and would like to support beyond just liking, sharing, and subscribing, um, which is totally nice if you do that, by the way. Um, <laughs> then please check me out on Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you can support the creation of new tutorials, my artist and education efforts whenever we travel around to conventions, and also get your name in the hat for our fairy house giveaways. This door, I keep coming back to the door because this is just a little part. Um, usually there's a whole house around it. <laughs> um, and so one dollar puts your name in the hat once for the fairy house giveaway. If you pledge five dollars, it puts your name in the hat five times. And then if you pledge ten dollars or more, you're still in the giveaway once, but you get like craft crates or, um, 
there's a bunch of different options for you to choose from. So you can get the wire wrapping craft crate, the chainmail craft crate, the um, dealer's choice where you just get like a surprise. You know, sometimes it'll be wire wrapping, sometimes it'll be chainmail, sometimes it'll just be a gift. Like, so go to my Patreon and check it out. There's a bunch of different descriptions and the more you pledge, the more materials or the more valuable of a gift you you get, you know, monthly, which is cool because that's, I might be able to get my grubby little paws on something that you might not have been able to find. Um, so, and also sometimes I send out like hand painted dragon eyes and like handmade polymer clay beads. So it's like, it's a fun way to help me keep doing what I do because I couldn't do this without you guys. So thank you all so much from the bottom. I'm dead serious guys. Thank you. Cause otherwise it'd just be me talking to my cat here on YouTube, which I would still do that anyways. But <laughs> I love you guys so much. I hope this tutorial was helpful to you. Um, Hit me up in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys around. Mwah. Happy crafting. Bye. <laughs>